Welcome to Angel Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we got some pretty fascinating stuff. First up, Goldman Sachs economist says Bitcoin is maturing, details how much institutional money has entered the market, and uh, hint, hint, he's uh, absolutely wrong. Also, we're going to take a look at what is going on with the uh, Bitfinex allegations as Bitfinex executives deny allegations of issuing USDT to pump Bitcoin, Tether backed by cash assets and a loan. This is a pretty interesting piece, which was actually shown originally over at What Bitcoin Did. We're going to dig into this and see exactly where this lawsuit is going. And those are the two articles we're going to go over today. A lot of information. So we'll just do two. And what I really want to do is take a look at what's going on with the market. So today, not too shabby, right? What is it? Uh, January 14th, 10 a.m. Not too bad. And uh, we've got a lot of great things going on. First up, uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin. It's uh, up 15% in 24 hours. Uh, you can't beat that. We had a little bit of a, a pullback, which everybody says healthy, but people lose their minds. And that's why I had people like Diddy on to explain to you that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in, the, in this year. It's always in four year cycles. Uh, we have in 2012, uh, you know, there's an all, there is a, a halving, 2013 all time high, uh, 2014, uh, we have a little bit of a, a dip, a big dip, 2015 uh, re retracement. Same thing happened in 2016, halving. 2017, all time high. 2018, dip. 2019, reset. 2020, halving. 2021, all time high. 2022, uh, dip. Big dip. So, really, which don't be concerned about 2022. Look at what's going on in 2021 and look what you can invest into. I'm not a financial advisor. I can just tell you what I would invest into. And uh, I've already done my, my entire portfolio and where I'm going from here. And then uh, actually, if you've taken a look, I actually had a pretty good, uh, a decent piece over on uh, what was going on with Voyager. So check that out later on. So Ethereum up 16%. Hey, great, 1,237. We're almost at the all-time high, which was 1,400. Uh, USDT, nobody cares unless you're the state of New York and you're auditing them. XRP, watch out, 1% down to 29 cents. Dot, amazing run. Uh, dot, 28% for 24 hours, 26 for the week, and it's up to $12. And like I've always said on this channel, I invest in people. Um, Dr. Gavin Wood was part of what I call the Ethereum Mafia, uh, kind of like the PayPal Mafia, but those guys uh, brought forth uh, Ethereum. You know, you have uh, something like that, uh, Dr. Gavin Wood. You got uh, Charles Hoskinson, who's also with Cardano, which is why I invested in him. You have Vitalik Buterin, uh, who brought forth Ethereum, obviously. That's why I invested in those projects. So always invest. I try to invest in people as much as possible because they're the ones that really make things work. So just look at who is behind the uh, actual project and you can't go wrong. Also, Litecoin, 13%, no idea why. 10%, uh, ADA, that's great. Uh, looks like they're wearing up for the Gogan era. Looks like they might uh, launch in the uh, end of February, early March, and that will give them smart contract functionality. Also, if you're looking for some place to uh, stake your Cardano, DNews has a stake pool. We have near perfect uptime. Uh, look in the description below uh, to check that out. Chainlink up 10%, $16. Hopefully, it can hit to that 19, almost hit. Stellar, BNB coin, USA, USDC, 30%. Anything great? Everything's up. It's, it's a great day, right? Uh, Theta, one of my holds, uh, $2.09. And if you noticed, uh, I am extremely biased towards my pick. You'll notice I'll, I'll, like, I'll like kind of skip over other things and go to my other, uh, the ones that I do. It's just because I'm biased and uh, I'm honest about it. That's just how it is. Uh, let's see, Celsius up 13%. <laughs> Again, one of my picks. 13%, uh, yeah, like $5, but it has taken a little bit of a tumble. It, it topped out at six, retraced back to five, and now here we are. But um, we took a look at uh, Pat Ackerman. He is the uh, mathematician, statistician guy that I um, uh, pretty much took all his information and uh, did that nice little Voyager uh, recap. Uh, he's got Celsius, uh, I think, between like 50 and $60 for this year. Uh, so take a look at that. Uh, I hope so. Hope he's right. Ave, everything's looking good. And then, so we're really doing like 18, 24%, looking really great, right? But, ooh, 24% for AVAC, or Avalanche. No idea what that is. Looks great. But uh, what else we got? I just want to make mention of one little thing, and that is Voyager is up to 92, uh, spot 92, up 50%, 400% for seven days. This is no coincidence. Uh, this is. Uh, we've been looking at this and we've been doing certain things uh, in the background as far as like uh, what we uh, chose to to study and Voyager is one of those things. It's at a dollar. When I did my price prediction, uh, which was just a week ago, 
uh, it was at 29 cents. And I said, it's going 30 bucks. And everybody's like, you're insane. And uh, here we are. So um, it could go up, it could go down. I'm not a short player on this one. This is a very long-term uh, type of hold. And uh, I think it's gonna do quite well. So uh, that's what's going on in the market. Let's, uh, let's jump into today's top stories, huh? Let's see what we got. So this was an article from Daily Hodl. Uh, Goldman Sachs economist says, Bitcoin is maturing, details how much institutional money is under the market. And it's a nice, nice, nice article, very well written, uh, but uh, kind of boring. So why don't we just watch the video where they pulled this from, and then uh, we can actually, you know, talk about it. Because before we start, I want you to pay attention to what this gentleman here, uh, let's see, who is he? Uh, Steve, uh, Steve Sedgwick, um, global head of uh, commodities, uh, Jeff Curie. Pay attention to what he talks about it as far as like the amount of institutional money that's in here. And then also when he talks about the uh, gold, how much uh, market cap of gold. It's kind of interesting. So uh, here we go. If you look at it historically, in fact, we were just talking about downside risk before this call. You know, you go back and, you know, the last rally in, in 2018 got to 27,000 and next time it was at three. So if, you know, historical performance is, a you know, any guy, there's a lot of risk there. Um, but I think that the, the market is beginning to become more mature. And I think any nascent market, you get that kind of volatility and those kind of risks that are associated with it. I think the key to creating some type of stability in the market is to see an increase in the participation of institutional investors. Right now, they're small. Sure. You know, it's about $700 billion of money in Bitcoin right now. Mm -hmm. um, of that, you know, roughly 1% of it's institutional money. But you know how to value this? Because I know you know how to value a barrel of oil. I know you... Stop right there. So he said about 1% is in institutions. It's institutional money coming into Bitcoin. Uh, so, I don't know. Because here's the thing. Here's Bitcoin treasuries. Uh, so you got three different categories that break it down. You got publicly traded companies, private companies, and ETF-like. Well, if you look at a grayscale Bitcoin trust, uh, they have almost 600,000 Bitcoin. There's only 21 million that'll ever be uh, out there in the world. Uh, we are only at 18.5 million. The last Bitcoin will be mined around 2140. Uh, that's what they tell me. I didn't do the math. <laughs> math is hard. So uh, I'm like, okay, sure. And uh, also you have to remember that um, there's a lot of Bitcoin that's lost. So people say, well, it's 18 and a half million circling supply. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's actually, I think it's about 16 million, 16 and a half million. I think at least 2 million has been lost. Imagine all those days in 2009, 2010, when everybody was mining Bitcoin, when it was like a, you know, a nickel. No one cared about that stuff. They threw away their, their uh, computers left and right. So I do not believe that there's 18 and a half million circling. That just doesn't make any sense to me. So then you got CoinShares, Ruffler, 3IQ, Galaxy Bitcoin Fund. And uh, if you take all of them, all of them, it's, uh, it's, one, it's over 1 million Bitcoin. So let me do some quick math. And uh, so you got 20, 21 million. Let's just say 21 million, right? So 10% of 21 million is, uh, or 10% or of 21 is 2.1. 5% is uh, uh, one. So we're looking at one, uh, you know, 5%. So when he says 1% institutional money, I mean, you take it all, right? Sure, 5%, uh, or maybe like this, two and a half. It's just a little thing where I'm like, there's more institutional money than, than what people realize. And I think uh, a lot more is gonna flow in, so uh, we will see. Anyhow, the next part gets pretty interesting where he says, well, how do you value that? Uh, the, uh, the commentator or the, um, the host, he's like, how do you value that? Because you can value gold, you can value uh, a barrel of oil, so how do you value Bitcoin? I thought it was interesting what he said. You know how to value uh, iron ore, right? If you get it right or wrong, you know what your methodology is. What about your methodology for a cryptocurrency and for Bitcoin? Do you actually know how to get a, an accurate valuation on this? So if you treat it like a, a defensive asset, such that the, um, like, let's say like gold, um, and we look at the size of defensive assets like the gold market, um, you know, there is like $2 trillion, $3 trillion in, in those kind of markets. Now we start to ask how much of this defensive money could be allocated uh, to something like a cryptocurrency or a Bitcoin. Right now, all the cryptocurrencies have about a trillion. Let's say it grows to two trillion. Then you just do the simple math. How many coins are out there? Divide it by that and you can end up with a fair value. Now, the question is that can give you some long run equilibrium, but the flows that you're referring to create a lot of volatility um, and a lot of uncertainty that makes it very difficult to forecast it. Do you have a recommendation on it at the moment? 
Um, you know, g- given the fact that um, you know you, you've seen a big run up across all of these markets, um, you know, I'm not going to take a strong view here. But um, this morning, you know, the, the traffic seems to be flowing one direction. Ah, should have went ballsy and just said, "Yeah, uh, put money into Bitcoin." You know what he could have could have said? <laughs> well, I mean, it does work from Goldman Sachs, whatever. But uh, he could have said, "You know what? Just." Two to three percent, you know, the basic run, general run of the mill answer would have been fantastic. Two to three percent, you know, just put that in Bitcoin and it's all volatile, but you know, really uh, w- would be good, especially because money's on fire. Uh, but they're not going to say that, but he should. So, what he said there, he goes, Ah, there's like two or three trillion in gold. And I'm like, I don't think that's really true. So, uh, taking a look at this, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you're not, this will be kind of boring because I always talk about this. So this is money in markets. And if we take a look at, this was just out on May 27, 2020. So not too, not too long ago, right? Um, each square represents 100 billion, okay? Each square. That's a very, not, not too bad, right? Silver isn't that much, 43 billion. Cryptocurrency at the time was only 244 billion. 244 billion. Now we're at a trillion, right? Military spending, U.S. budget deficit. Of course, that went up. Yeah. Coins and banknotes, Fed's balance sheet. There's billionaires. Good for those guys. Great. Good for them. But here's gold. And gold, if you notice, it's around 11 trillion here. I think it's actually 12 trillion in reality, but let's just say 11 trillion. So when he talks about the numbers, he's just a little off. But you have to understand these are the numbers of all of gold. And if you believe, like I believe, that uh, Bitcoin is gold 2.0 or is digital gold, I don't see how. Uh, Bitcoin can't eat into that market cap. So let's just say it captures half. That would give it at five trillion, five point five trillion dollars. Six if it's on, you know, twelve math. So I mean, if you're looking at uh, six trillion dollars, and that's in Bitcoin, just Bitcoin alone, uh, not to mention the other uh, crypto assets that are out there. I mean, you're looking at four hundred fifty thousand, five half a million right there, and uh, that's not too bad. So. Uh, check my math in the comments section, but uh, it's somewhere around there. And uh, I, I don't think you'll fault me if I'm a little bit off, but like 50K here or there. So if anybody uh, has any problem with a uh, uh, Bitcoin above 400K, let me know. All right. So that is it for that piece. Let's move on to our next article. All right. So this one here, Bitfinex. So we had done a video a couple of days ago uh, about the Tether incident. And I had talked to, to, to you about everything that, that's going on. Tether is number three market cap. Let's just take a look here. Where are we? So Tether, Tether. Uh, here's the market cap of 24 billion, 82 in the 24 uh, hour volume. Uh, that's what be, but that, that is what is being used for a lot of different trading pairs, so sure, right? So let's just say, for example, and I, I talked about this, let's just say that they, they come out and go, you know what, we fooled all of you, and uh, it's not backed one to one the dollar. We don't have $24 billion laying around, so sorry. Uh, $24 billion goes away. But out of the market cap of $1 trillion, whatever. Uh, right now, we're at $1.85 billion, so, uh, or $1 trillion, $85 billion. So if we lose $24 billion, who cares? I mean, it would be a shock to the system. Uh, Bitcoin would go down, which is great for me and you because we dollar cost average and that'd be like, thank you, tip of the hat, appreciate it. And you just pick some cheap Bitcoin up. It's a flash sale. And then after that, people go, well, I'm going to go to stable coins that are actually around USDC or whatever else. I just use USD, USDC. And it looks pretty good. I wish, you know what, there was one, one complaint I wish uh, we could uh, address. And that is that the stable coins are built, they are an ERC-20 token. So USDC and USDT, they are on the Ethereum network and the fees are crazy outrageous. So uh, hopefully, you know, I think like, like Leo token or whatever else that's out there for a stable coin, RSV, RSR, which are the one, um, that stable coin a little bit different. So uh, maybe not on the, on the Ethereum network right now, that'd be great. So anyhow, this was a piece taken from what Bitcoin did. And if you haven't listened to this guy McCormick, uh, he's a funny guy. So he was on with uh, Richard Hart. <laughs> Richard Hart had him on. They were talking about Hex. And for like 10 minutes straight, all McCormick said was, you're a scammer. I don't want to talk to you. You're just a scamming piece of junk. And this is it. And Richard's like, it was kind of funny because Richard's like, I'm not a scammer. I don't know what's going on. And it, whether you like Richard Hart or, 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 or you don't or uh, uh, you like uh, McCormick. It's just, it's just a funny video. I, I need to link that at the very end. It's hilarious. And then at like 12 minutes, it's like, all right, well, I'm a scammer and that's it. It's just funny. So he had these two guys on, uh, Biolo, uh, 
Arduino and Stuart Hogner. I think I nailed that. And uh, one is the uh, chief technical officer and the other one's the general counsel. And they just pretty much talk about what's going on with this lawsuit. And it's, it's kind of important, but I think people are putting like way too much preference on what's, what the outcome of this, this whole thing is. It's not like, you know, we're going to find out that, that there's some kind of virus uh, that just, you know, wipes out all cryptocurrency because it seems like that's what everybody's talking about. I mean, I get it is one of those things, but in, in the long run, we'll be just fine. We'll be just fine if this collapses. People will just do something else. So anyhow, uh, Bitfinex General Counsel Stuart Hogner, that's the guy, in an interview with Peter McCormick, Bitfinex General Counsel claims the misconception that USDT is not fully backed uh, from a sworn affidavit, which he says has been taken out of context. Isn't it always, always out of context? According to affidavit, about 74% of Tether backing was in the form of cash and cash equivalents on hand. The remaining 26% was in the form of a $550 million loan to the company, which it is fully servicing. Great, so you got some loans to cover everything else and it's backed one to one of the dollar. Sounds good to me. Since the stablecoin's total market cap has gone up from 2.1 billion to the current 22 billion, the loan share of the USDT reserves shrunk to two and a half percent. Hmm. So both Hogner and Arduino have confirmed that Bitcoins are part of the reserves assets that Bitfinex uses to back the stablecoin. So essentially what they're saying is that yes, it is a stablecoin. Yes, we have it back to the dollar. We don't really have dollars, dollars, but we do have Bitcoin. And as long as that goes up, we should be okay. If I'm reading this correctly, again, not a lawyer, but this is what it sounds like to me. Arduino does reveal the only time Bitfinex acquired the Bitcoins, which now form part of Tether's reserves, he states, the Bitcoins in reserves are a good amount remaining from the past acquisition that we likely did in 2015, 2016. Okay, uh, the Bitcoins, which we bought for a good price in 2015, 16, will probably be enough for perpetuity. So essentially what he's saying is like, look, we got a bunch of Bitcoin back in the day and it was super cheap. And uh, now we got a bunch of them. So if we have to sell them off to, you know, uh, to, to back these, uh, uh, these loans or to, to say it as a stable coin, we'll do it. But I bet for them, they're like, we don't want to do that. Because if they think about it this way, if they have Bitcoin right now and they have to sell it just because, you know, the, there's a stipulation that you have to have dollars. Well, that would suck for them because especially right now, right now, Bitcoin's roughly about 40,000. What if it goes all the way up to like 400,000? Or let's just say my, my reserve wet blanket uh, type of uh, assessment, which means it's, I thought it was going to be like 150K. That would be awful because right there, they are eliminating uh, a 4X gain and just because they have to you know, uh, go to the uh, stipulation of, these, um, uh, of this lawsuit. So I think that would be pretty awful for them in general. Hopefully they don't have to do it. However, this is where it gets good. The lack of an independent audit. I hear this all the time. Well, if they have it, why don't they just do an independent audit and then everything can be done? Kind of like what Celsius did. Celsius had somebody come in, independent uh, people. I think it was, uh, not Coinmetrics, it was uh, one of those, um, Masari or one of those places that actually do all the different uh, algorithms. That, this is good. Why don't they just do that? Well, when asked why the company is not hiring outside auditors to conduct a full audit, an evasive I like how he said it, an evasive, an evasive Hogner. Just, he did, they, they couldn't just say, oh, he said this. An evasive Hogner says, some steps have been taken in this direction as a show of good faith. Steps include consulting reports produced by one accounting firm and a law firm, as well as report from Bitfinex bankers. Bitfinex is continuously looking for ways to share information with the community to be more and open to be transparent. I like that answer. Uh, very uh, PC. Hogner then closes by clarifying that the AG, the Attorney General, has not filed a lawsuit against Bitfinex and Tether that the action against the two entities does not amount to be a criminal investigation. So really, that is really what it comes down to. And there's really nothing much more to say about this one. Honestly, I, honestly, I, I have to tell you, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, uh, I don't really care which way it goes. Uh, if, if it does come out and they're like, oh, we didn't have anything, great, Bitcoin goes down and I get a flash sale. And everybody here on this channel who dollar cost average you are probably all doing the exact same thing. And we're like, great, we can pick up some more Bitcoin. If it doesn't, then uh, everything gets smoothed over and no one has to worry about that nonsense. And then of course the price either you know, stabilizes or it goes up a little bit more. It's a win-win situation. And these are the things about, about investing for the long term. If you just kind of take some, some sound principles, and again, not a, not a financial advisor, but just some sound principles and go, okay, I'm just gonna 
do a little bit here. I'm not going to, you know, put my, I'm not going to sell my kidneys and my kids and everything else uh, to, to put into Bitcoin today. Uh, it usually works itself out. So that, so that's, that is the uh, big thing. Look, uh, that is it for today, but I'm going to put out a second video uh, because I need to talk to everybody about, well, there, there's a couple of things. First, I need to talk to you about, it's not how much you make, it is how much you keep. And you know on this channel, we're big on scams, we hate them. Uh, I did an interview uh, with Marky, and Marky is one of the community members over at Trade the Chain. And she had an issue come up where she got swindled out of uh, $10,000 worth of a cryptocurrency from the Atomic Wallet. And I have, it, it's just good to put a, a face to all these scams that are out there. And she's gonna tell you exactly what she did, how it happened, and what not to do. And I'm gonna give you some little tips here. But you have to understand, um, for scams and everything else, don't be all high and mighty and be like, how can you do that? I get emails on a, at least a weekly basis where people say, Rob, watch your channel. I did the exact same thing you said not to do. And I always thought I was too smart to be swindled out of my crypto. And it happens a lot. The same thing, I, there is a doctor, I think it was from Ohio, a doctor from Ohio, he lost over, it was over $50,000. And he said, man, he goes, I just, I, I knew not to do it. He goes, but I just, and I heard you say things in the back of my, my brain, but I still did it. So I need to hammer this into your head, uh, everybody who's watching, just to make sure that you keep everything. So it's not how much you make, it is how much you keep. That is a big thing. And the second thing uh, I want to address is about videos and sponsorships, uh, because I've been talking a whole heck of a lot about Voyager. So the real question is, am I being sponsored by Voyager. So I'll answer all that later. All right, so thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you like these types of videos, there'll be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. Not sure what YouTube do their magic. And that is all. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one later today.